And welcome to the second Lions Marketers private session of this week. My name is Fiorenza Pligna. I'm the Global Head of Creative Excellence at Lions. And first of all, I'd like to welcome back anyone that joined us for our session <laughs> yesterday. It's great to see some familiar faces again and welcome, a warm welcome to anyone joining us for the first time today. So for those who don't know, Lion Marketers is a community of marketing professionals looking to learn about how they can make more impactful marketing decisions. The topics we discuss here vary throughout the year and really depend on the conversation that marketers are having at that moment in time. So this series, it's all about mm -hmm. creative effectiveness. And as with all our session, we encourage you to ask questions, to get involved in the chat. So feel free to come off mute and don't forget to be on video like myself, because we love for this session to be interactive and collaborative as much as possible. So we will be able to share your questions with our speakers. So it's good for you. It's a good opportunity for all of you to get some unique insights and learnings linked to your challenges. And moderating today's panel is Spencer Fox. Spencer is part of the senior leadership team at Lions and is the vice president of Lions Advisory, the part of Lions that support businesses with creative transformation. Welcome, Spencer. He will be joined by Jade Olsler, Executive Vice President of Thought Leadership at Kantar. Welcome, Jane. And Pierre Caillot, Chief Marketing Officer at KFC France. Welcome, Pierre. Thank so you. Two, two brilliant minds with you today, with two very different set of expertise on effectiveness. Jane is a skillful marketing research professional and runs Kantar Global Thought Leadership. And this is a great time to chat with Jane as Kantar has just finished their annual Effectiveness Awards. So Jane is bringing to you today lots of new insights coming from those awards. And Pierre, Pierre leads on all things marketing for KFC France and KFC have recently taken home a bronze lion in the Film Craft Lions Awards for KFC Cinema. And also they top the tables in Kantar's Effectiveness Awards. Congratulations, Pierre, and congratulations, KFC. But before, before we kick things off with our amazing panelists, we have a clip, a quick clip from KFC to show how they ended up taking home Kantar's TV Effectiveness Award. Let's take a quick look. KFC sales have been flagging since 2012 and were below market average. To renew consumer interest, KFC had to tackle the root cause, the negative perception of its products. It was a huge challenge. French people's expectations regarding food quality have changed considerably. McDonald's and Burger King have been successfully upgrading the quality perception of their products for years. But above all, what could the brand say that was different to promote these products? That they are chicken-based when all of the brands offer beef? Is talking about chicken enough to create desire? Discussions with fans made it very clear. People love KFC not so much for the chicken, but for the crispy coating. In the market where soft is a crucial feature of both Big Macs and Whoppers, it's the incredible crispiness that makes KFC so special. So, we made crispiness the central feature of all KFC advertising using words, sounds, music, and stunning close-ups of its products. KFC put Colonel Sanders back at the art of the campaign to deliver on the crispy promise. KFC made the bold choice to allocate 90% of its budget to promote permanent items on the menu rather than temporary items. Finally, 
KFC developed a new pitch focusing on the quality of his chicken and spotlighting his partnership with 300 French poultry farmers. Riding with my homies in the middle of the night Almost midnight like it's sticking up too high Heavy laughing, we be shouting, spitting cries Getting hungry, pull up at the traffic light There's an open thing, let me go inside it Get some wings, get some open The new brand strategy has delivered historical results Sharp improvement in perception of product quality Consideration reaches peak All this flavor, all this layer, yes Revenue growth reached 10 year record levels and for a similar number of restaurants. Fashion mm -hmm. Pierre, such a well thought out and data solution, data led solution to create to creative effectiveness for KFC France. Thank you. So, you're welcome. And so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Spencer. Jane and Pierre again, and uh, Spencer, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that introduction, Fiore. And, and thank you, for P Pierre, for sharing that wonderful show reel with us. I, thought, I hope we can bring some chicken swagger <laughs> to, to this uh, session today. So welcome all of you that have joined us. Uh, and a very warm welcome to, to Jane and Pierre again. Thanks so much for giving your time today. Um, as those of you who have joined us know, this session has been set up for us to share ways in which we can all make more creative marketing uh, effective decisions in our day-to-day -day roles and notwithstanding that of course it's a big topic of the moment there are numerous blogs vlogs uh, podcasts etc that we can turn to to hear about creative effectiveness so what we're looking to do today is, is to bring two different viewpoints We've got somebody who leads on insights and knows what it takes to develop a great idea and somebody who knows to take, how, how to take that great idea and activate upon it. And hopefully bringing together those two viewpoints, we'll be able to share some, some really good um, insight with you today and maybe even challenge some of your own thinking. And, and with that in mind, please do participate. Please put your questions in the chat, thoughts, observations, anything you want to share, and we'll do our best to weave some of that into the discussion today. So with, without further ado, I'm going to jump straight in and Jane, turn to you and ask, just help us set the scene a little bit here. Um, perhaps you could share a bit about the Creative Effectiveness Awards that you've developed at Kantar and share with us any interesting trends or anything that's come out that you think would be useful for the audience today. Yeah, thank you, Spencer. So this is the fourth year that we've run our Kantar Creative Effectiveness Awards and they are awards which are essentially voted for by consumers, by real people, because it's people who are um, responding to questions um, from our link solution, which is our ad testing solution and our ad optimization solution. So what happens is we, we, decide, uh, we said, decided this year to do a kind of top 10 uh, digital and social ranking, top 10 in TV, top 10 print and outdoor. And how we define effectiveness is ads that score both highly on short term measures. So using our short term sales validation. So are they driving, you know, the business, the sales that are required, but also are they driving brand impact as well? So, so the long term. So we're measuring both and ads that score highly in both will, you know, will get to the top. Um, so Pierre's KFC ad um, is the one um, that won the TV uh, award this year. It, came, it, it, was, it was a winner. Um, so what we do is we look at all those ads and then we think, gosh, you know, what are the what are the themes that we can surface this year? And it's over and above the basic principles of marketing, you know, getting a, having a clear objective, getting your branding right, using your assets consistently. Those things are a given whatever the media channel, whatever the year, we, and we, 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 we do refer to those. But we look also at what we think are topical themes, things that have arisen in the bulk of all these ads over the year. And it's not, you know, it actually they're very similar themes, whether they're digital or non-digital. That sort of divide is less, less important now, we believe. Um, but the themes we found this year, which um, a couple of which are very relevant for the, your KFC um, ad, Pierre, are... Um, what we call escape rooms. There's quite a lot of escapism. There's quite a lot of going to alternative universes, multiverses, um, that sort of thing. There's there's another thing which we call touch my soul, which is emotion, uh, nostalgia, again, which feeds through very well, I think, into your ad, which literally goes back to 1952. 
Um, we saw it in the middle of your video clip there, the, the, the guy working in KFC and then meeting Colonel Sanders. So touching as well, emotion is super, really, really important in advertising. And now more than ever, even more important in digital advertising and important to measure it as well, um, we believe. There's a there's another th couple of themes about making life easy. There's quite a lot of simple um, kind of quite calm ads, which are um, very straightforward and um, very simply delivering, um, you know, product benefits and emotion. And then the other things we discovered were in the last few years, we've talked about IND um, and how that is, you know, sustainability, et cetera, and how purpose and how all those are portrayed in ads. And we think this year they're now starting to be like more authentic and more embedded. You know, advertisers aren't making a point, you know, like about the characters in the ads or what they're trying to do. It's a natural part of the storytelling. So we think that um, a better world is, you know, is now, you know, an important part of an ad's execution. And then last, but definitely not least, um, we've called it You Made Them Smile because good news, humour is actually back on the increase again. Um, it's not used enough as per usual in digital ads, but it is on the increase again. We were a bit worried last year because we thought, oh God, you know, after 20 years, humour's in decline. Advertisers and marketers are really missing out here because we know it's hugely effective. Um, so those are the five key themes we identified. And I think two or three of them are relevant for this uh, KFC ad. Absolutely. And I, and I feel that um, congratulations, by the way, on developing the awards. It's so great to have something that's linked um, or voted by consumers, also linked to actual outcomes, which is the true measure of effectiveness. It's, it's, it's great to see that. And I'm interested to know when you saw those themes emerging, the escape, mm -hmm. the nostalgia, etc., were there any surprises for you in your in your world of insights where you're seeing this sort of stuff all the time? Is there anything that jumped out as a big surprise? I think I think one uh, big surprise in a good way is the the amount of care and attention that is now being paid to digital advertising, which has historically been, you know, the majority of it has been seen as perhaps a bit throwaway, you know, literally short term, chuck it out there, see if it works. But I think with the increasing investment in digital advertising, we're now starting to see some really, you know, careful execute the same kind of care that you know, marketers will take in TV ads. They're now starting to take care in digital ads too. Um, and I think that results in more thoughtful, effective advertising because, you know, marketers actually care what consumers think and how they respond, you know, and if the ad is supposed to be funny, is it actually funny? Is that what consumers think? So, you know, the way that you can test these ads now is, you know, it doesn't need to take long and it can derive huge insights, result in really quick edits that really make the ad shine and sing so i think we're now starting to see that in digital advertising so that's a pleasant surprise i would say yeah absolutely and, and pierre I, I, you've obviously capitalized on a number of these themes and have experienced the success uh, that comes of that with, with your recent advertising um it'd be interesting to just kind of start at the beginning with you and just ask you know, what do you think has been the biggest contribution to kfc's creative success yeah, thank you, Spencer. Maybe there is multiple key success factors I want to highlight, uh, but at the real starting point, because it's easy for me to talk now when we have the positive results, but at, at the real starting point, it was uh, complicated. We tried to make, uh, uh, we think about both things, but uh, we don't know where, where, where we, will, uh, we will go in the future. So at the real starting point, maybe the key success factor was um, the creation of a positive relation, uh, an exigent relation with the, with the agency. This is the first beginning, and maybe this is the mandatory cre to create many, many positive things, just not only a one shot with success, uh, successful advertising, which is at the end possible sometimes, but try to give consistency to all the brand platform and, and keep it and improve it every, every year. So um, we operated in our case, a competition of our ag of, uh, agency, sorry, three years ago. Um, we decided to, to launch the, the collaboration with Harris Paris. And since the, since the first beginning, we tried to build every day a relation, really solid, authentic, and transparent. And maybe this is the, 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 key, uh, the key accelerator of the creativity every, uh, every year we, we had uh, in the collaboration. Um, we think the collaboration with the agency has a kind of love story um, of the brand and business challenge. Uh, and we try to make them part of the story every time. So we give them all the insight we find around the brand, around the business. They are in the team um, from the junior to the leadership team. We gather 
uh, all the maximum information we can and give them uh, hand to hand in a daily uh, connection basis. Um, and we invest a lot of time in the relation to create confidence, agility, and build only at the end KFC one team to perform on the creativity, but also on the, uh, the media scoping of all our campaign. Um, so for me, it's the mandatory to build creativeness and effectiveness in every challenge you're facing uh, and stay fast and agile in a, Q, uh, in a QSR market like us that need to be uh, every time agile uh, to adapt the, the, the communication response to the crisis. But the second thing, when you have this, uh, this relation and invest the time with, with, uh, with your agency, is maybe to leverage the relation, um, adopting a bold and creative filter in all you do, and with um, uh, you know, a filter in your creative judgment. judgment sorry. Uh, and so, especially in our KIC global side, we think all we do as a, with the red mantra, um, the R is for relevancy. Uh, so uh, in our case, we find the crispy brand platform, which is truly relevant, um, because we built, we built it to deliver on the problem we want to solve since the first beginning of the competition. The crispiness of our product, which is the key differences, uh, is a 100% product-centric response to the, the consumer negative perception um, around taste and quality for KFC friends. And so um, the real starting point of this platform solve or can solve in the future the, the problem we, we face with the consumer. So for me, if you find the right platform with the right promise, that have the potential to, you know, step change the, uh, the brand perception of the consumer, you have, since the starting point, the possibility to, to improve your, all your item and at the end your consideration, which is the, con the challenge we, we, we are facing in France. Um, in the red mantra, we have relevancy, we have also is as a, an understandable communication. And so Jane talked about that, but we try to make simple things really easy to understand and accessible to, to all the consumer. Uh, so, um, we, yeah, we, we want to, to build all the communication around the, the extreme crispiness of our product, which is quite evident when you see the product and when you experience a, a KFC, the KFC food offer. And at the end, the D is for distinctive. It's quite an easy frame, but in all we do, we need to be, um, we need to be in the market with the relevancy, but at the same time creative in all we do. And to be honest with the agency, we are truly exigent to keep only the ID that can make Ball thing and ball, uh, ball creativity at the end, um, because we know that our crispy promise is unique and we apply the same principle for our brand. Um, and we find that this platform, truly simple at the beginning, but because it starts with the, the product promise we can offer, which is truly distinctive, allowed us to be totally creative, even if we talk about quality, promotion, iconic product, and let us a lot of flexibility to, uh, to be agile on the market and uh, um, create many, many things, maybe interesting for the consumer, changing uh, its perception. So at the end, uh, for me, the creative effectiveness can become when you install a solid relation with your agency by giving them a clear filter for uh, everything you will build with them, especially with the lens of the creative impact and boldness, uh, being sure you stay relevant and is and understandable for the consumer. Yeah. Uh, um, amazing. And I, I, I'm going to zoom in on the comment you made about making things simple, because I know it takes a lot of hard work to make things simple. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. And it sounds like to build that truly honest and collaborative relationship with your agency and, and building that platform that you've just been very generous in sharing with us, that must have taken some work and some organization on, on your side. Who, who led on that? And what kind of... You know, barriers did you find internally that you had to break through in order to ensure that you kind of pushed ahead with, with this strategy? Yeah, um, the, the point at the end, it's some human things. You need to spend time to discuss with the, all the team from leadership to all the junior members. Um, and we try to share with them this kind of filter, think about the distinctiveness in all we do from the creative people in the agency to the commercial, uh, um, but also in the, the, the commercial discussion. And the best way we find to process it, uh, because at the end we have annual uh, communication plan, we try to brief the global annual creative challenge we have, and we are facing many, many challenges in France, like uh, uh, a lack of familiarity of our product, like the, sometimes the negative perception of our product also around quality. We give them all the problem we want to solve. We give them also the, the best initiative we want to activate, but at the end we co-build all the communication, uh, uh, each communication we will produce, you know, to, to step change the, the consumer perception. And this is for me the best way to, uh, at the same time, judge with them, you know, the, um, the proposition and the creative idea they will show, they will show off. 
So maybe five times or six times every year, we gather all the creative ID for all the, the annual plan of the next year. And we think about all the time, is it the best, uh, the best way to be bold, to make the thing differently versus Burger King and McDonald's? Uh, is it creative? Is it is, uh, is to understand to, for the consumer? And is it relevant versus the category? Do we talk about food, about crispy promise? So this is a simple thing for me, but the best way to manage at the same time the discussion from promotion to brand to um, um, core, um, some core communication. Uh, and not only discuss one shot campaign, which is the best way to don't be consistent at the end and don't make, you know, uh, don't create a, a bold pl brand platform, but only a one shot uh, campaign. Uh, and the other thing, uh, sorry, sorry, Spencer, I, I just want to add one thing because this is about the collaboration with Kantar. Um, maybe Kantar is not the, all the reason about the success, but it's a part of because um, we pre-test since the beginning all the creative material we have. Um, and for us, this is maybe one on the answer about the, the creative culture we install in the marketing team, but also uh, in the side of the agency. And it's not evident for the agency to heard that there will be a counter results each time. Um, and that's interesting because at the beginning it was um, a collaboration we tried to uh, explain to, to the agency at the, at the moment it's fully accepted. And all the time they know that when we think about an ID, we think about the magic recipe that will uh, make it to play. Um, and every time we, we produce an ad review with the, the best learnings of each year with Kantar, we share with them, we discuss for the, the next plan if uh, we adopt the same magic recipe, what's the new on it. Uh, and they, there is no maybe me a magic recipe at the end, but all is about process with the agency to maybe to, to be consistent. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a collaboration that's clearly paying dividends. And Jane, just, just to you, it'd be interesting just to hear a little bit more about KFC's presence across your effectiveness study and, and what you think makes it work so well. And are there any common traits that KFC has with other effective work that you've seen? It'd be great to hear that from you. Yeah, I think I think a few things. I think one is um, tapping into emotions more generally is is a good idea and it does drive brand impact and I think Georgia there's uh, we've got a, a slide um, that we can show at this point on what um, emotional experience does to brand equity uh, if you can just show that so it's you know it's highly relevant to tap into people's emotions um, yeah so that you can probably see that there I'm maybe you double click on it sorry, but strong digital ads that build brand equity trigger more emotional experiences so ads that build brand equity generally um, and this is just a digital example um, do trigger more emotional experiences which is a good thing and then if we go to the next one as well we've got another uh, slide which shows and generally they leave viewers with positive feelings. I think there's one thing, you know, we've only seen a clip of a bit of your ad there, Pierre, but, you know, it's a really positive ad. The music's really upbeat. Um, the, you know, the, the other thing that happens within that as well is that your, your focus on the crispiness, um, crispy since 1952, is actually really cleverly repeated in detail throughout the ad. There are little crunching noises on the music. You know, it's a, like a little emphasis, but it's, it's something that we talk about a lot is using your distinctive brand assets throughout your communications. And it doesn't have to be like hitting it home with a hammer. It can just be very light touch, little crispy, crunchy noise. Um, and so it's the attention to detail in ads, which we know makes a difference as well. Um, it's also got like humour as well, like humour is really important and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to get everyone laughing out loud. It can just be very light humour that just gives makes people smile. And I think, Georgia, we've got a slide on humour that we can just quickly share in the chat as well, um, which um, shows that both in TV advertising and digital advertising, there it is, it looks a little bit small, you can see um, humour, which is the, the purple line. Um, actually is not that much used in digital video, but is starting to be on the increase in TV again. So we track these things over time. We track the use of music, you know, humour, celebrities, music's pretty much a banker. Music's always a good idea. Humour's underutilised. And I think that um, your ad is um, an example of kind of a, a light humour, you know, funny things are happening to the guy who's the server at KFC and he's like all a bit puzzled by it, but it's, it's, it's all very light, light hearted. So all of those things we know drive brand impact. And um, so they're very sensible choices to make. And, you know, 
way. Sometimes, you know, it's a difficult conversation to have with agencies, but like we can test these things and we can prove them. Um, and, you know, the whole point about testing is we're, you know, we're all here to make the ad the best it can be, whether it's a digital ad or a TV ad. So um, I think all of those things are, are part of the story. Spencer. Absolutely. And it's re really interesting. I mean, you've probably seen something similar, but we saw obviously at Can Lions over recent years, a little bit of a shift towards much more kind of rationally focused campaigns, very purpose driven, um, yep. quite kind of logical in message, not necessarily <laughs> strong, positive emotional connections. Mm -hmm. Do you think we've kind of turned the corner? Well, I, I hope so. Like we've done a lot of testing, for example, on sustainability advertising, which has been possibly at the more worthy end of the spectrum, shall we say, and possibly not always positive. You know, it's highlighted difficult topics, negative things. But ultimately, we know that you need to give people hope. Now, you know, it depends on the category. It depends on the brand. But leaving people with a positive feeling definitely um, reaps, reaps reward. And I think, you know, purpose and um, sustainability are a bit like the, um, you know, better world theme that I, I spoke about, which is those things don't you don't need to bash people over the head with those ideas in your ad they should be intrinsic they should be within the ad it should be natural and normal rather than uh you know something that perhaps overtakes your product message you know so like Pierre was saying they identified the kind of crispiness that's that's the the key um differentiating factor to to go with um, uh, you know, one of the issues that we do see is actually advertisers just trying to cram in too much into one ad, whether it's a digital ad or a TV ad. And that's never a good idea because it just confuses people. So keeping it simple is is at the heart of good ideas. Absolutely. And, and maintaining that differentiation is key. And Pierre, obviously, KFC, a stellar brand, there's a weight of responsibility when working with a brand like KFC to maintain um, differentiation. And it's and it's great to hear about the, the work of, of crispiness because as, as your um, piece at the top reminded us, you're in your category when you've got competitors kind of raising the quality bar, that becomes a, almost a hygiene factor. So you have to find something else to, to differentiate on. So I'd be interested if you could share with us what you think marketers can do to better differentiate or maintain differentiation in, in very kind of competitive markets like yours. Yeah, yeah I, I want to build on the Jane, what Jane explained because at the first beginning, um, the distinctiveness is possible for us because we find the right brand platform with the, uh, you know, the, maybe the right solution and the right, the right distinctive promise with our brand, which is the crispiness. At the beginning, it's quite quite a simple thing around the product, but maybe you you can create emotion around that and give it to a new value to your brand, uh, give crispiness to your brand, but also to your product. So um, the first thing we observe, uh, we observed as um, Jane explained is that if you respect it, if you respect the promise you, uh, you, you found and that you know th that will resonate for the consumer, if, if you respect it and highlight it and story, uh, story tell the, uh, the key promise you will have, which is the crispiness in our case, you will success. Um, for example, uh, when we have the same shooting and the same image for an advertising on digital or TV, uh, but changing only one thing like the script and the voiceover, um, talking about the crispiness uh, or without, we don't have exactly the same performance. And we can have bad performance if the only the voiceover talk about and something to maybe uh, too, too far to the crispiness proposition. Uh, and if we go back to the beginning of the starting point and the, the, the proposition we have in this brand platform, it's, it's a success at the end with the same image, same music, same thing like that. So um, yeah, we find our promise and maybe we, we need to keep it. Even if we talk about the brand with the Colonel Sanders and the heritage uh, uh, code, even if we talk about 100% copy um, TV assets with only food in the asset, and even if we talk about promotion, we need to be uh, to keep the uh, the beginning of your brand platform at the heart of each message, uh, and find different way to explain it to the consumer, uh, playing on the five senses, you know, with the visual, with the the voiceover, the music, uh, some brand sig signature. So this is the first thing. The only the other one is to, if you want to make bold thing, maybe you need to give enjoyment in all the discussion with the with the agency and reflect it in all you all you do. 
Um, and we play communication in France as a challenger. We are a big brand in France, but challenger. So we don't want to make things like McDonald's, which is in leader position. Uh, we need to talk, for example, about serious things like quality, but not uh, not uh, at the, as the same thing as the same way. Sorry, um, with a specific tone of voice, with bolder music, bolder chords. We need to be more. We can be more creative because we have the possibility to take some risk. Um, so we try to make these things all the time. Um, but the thing we talked about process previously, uh, all the time you need to think about your brand code's consistency. So that's why since the first beginning, we try to say to the agency, what's the key code? And the key code needs to be modern because we are in a, in a kind of um, um, the brand pride uh, importance in our category. So you, you need to find brand codes with the music, with the signature, with the crunch at the end, um, with the red, with the strips we found, uh, give the... Um, for example, some uh, um, brand DNA at the heart of the cookie with the Colonel Sanders, but respect it. Um, so all the time we think about the brand code consistency. Uh, we play, for example, every year the same music, uh, but not in the same way, but the same music in all we do to give a, a code of repetition for the consumer. I understand this is KFC that is talking about. Um, and the next year we can renew, for example, this code. Uh, but all the time we played on all the assets to give a part of the consistency. Um, and the last point for me, I don't know if it's humor because uh, it's not exactly what we try to play, but uh, as you say, it's a kind of enjoyment and try to make uh, uh, yeah, distinct things. Um, we try to infuse cultural things, modernity and craft in all we do uh, to be distinctive. Um, we prefer to make three campaigns, five campaigns uh, and make it perfectly well with credible food, uh, beautiful brand, uh, imaginary uh, footprint. Um, to respect the consumer and offer them a, a good moment on advertising, not be bored uh, when, you, when, when they, they see our advertising assets. So this okay. may be uh, some, some of the, the things we try to, uh, to, to, to respect, but it's a, a long journey. Yeah, because. absolutely. And, and of course, when you put the hard work into developing a, a great distinctive or, or differentiated brand proposition, yeah, that relentless focus on consistency and activation is is, is going to be key uh, yeah. to the success of the campaign. And, and just on on consistency across channels, Jane, just looking at the that fabulous piece of research that you've shared that mm. found that kind of shift towards escapism and more emotional type advertising in, in yeah. digital ads. And are you seeing that played out across other channels as well as digital, like in outdoor TV, etc.? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's various pieces of research we've we've done, but I think the big the big challenge really for uh, for marketers today and over the last few years have been with you know the proliferation of channels as to like how 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 does consistency play out in an environment where actually every channel does require a slightly different treatment and in some cases a radically different treatment. Um, so we we identified that yeah. Being consistent is really important, consistent, you know, in your approach, in your brand assets, in, in the ideas and, and how they're executed. But we also note that it's really important to customise to a degree to channels. I mean, I guess, you know, the extreme example would be, I don't know, a TV ad versus a TikTok ad. You wouldn't use the same thing, right, on, on both those channels. So we know that if you get the balance right between an integrated campaign and um, customizing it for each channel, then that, that is the magic ingredient that makes your effectiveness uh, sing in a way. And, um, you know, the other thing is that we've, we've got, uh, we know from all our cross media studies actually that, you know, an individual's experience of a campaign is not the same as another individual's experience of a campaign. Some people might see more outdoors, some people might see more digital, some people might watch the TV and not see one other part of it. So, it's not, you know, this isn't a perfect world where you can orchestrate everything beautifully. People will experience it on their own, on the channels in their own, in their own way. So for a marketer to actually identify and do, do the work to identify their distinctive brand assets, what, work out what needs to be consistent and what can change um, is, is the way, I think, to make se successful advertising work on, on all those different channels. And I guess even more reason why you need to be absolutely crystal clear on your on your brand, your differentiation and relevance and have all of that stuff nailed so that you can be tactical. And we, we had a theme um, 
from our from coming out of can last year which we called tactical topicality and it was about it's leaning on some of the stuff that pierre just talked about about being agile and be able being able mm -hmm. to kind of respond quite quickly to things that are going on out there but you can only do that if you're really clear on what your brand stands for or you can only do that with confidence if you're really clear of what of what your brand stands for so that was quite an interesting trend coming out of, of last year um, and i think that also actually if i can just say it also plays to if you think of um perhaps a more radical example where you know lots of brands using influencers or you know opinion leader sort of creator content now actually it's even more important if you're kind of outsourcing the creation to a third party you've got to give them a really clear brief otherwise you know that consistency isn't going to play across all the creative content that's that's happening um so i think that's a really good example where it's really important as i said to, to do the work understand what is truly ownable by your brand make sure you keep tabs on it and measure it over time um and continuously test and, and test and learn but using influencers and creators is I think um, creating real challenge marketers because you know how much how much leeway do you give them um, and what is yours and what is theirs is is not as clear as it used to be. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. And we've seen in recent news <laughs> some of that playing out. Some of what you've alluded to, and and yeah. actually the opposite of that is is the traditional TV ad. And we've heard, I mean, we hear so often that the the thirty second TV clip is dead. You know, it's over. And yet here we are, uh, we can see proving everybody wrong um, and having an effectiveness award in the TV category. So, yeah, I'd be interested to hear your views on kind of sp specifically how KFC um, did that and what, what makes your TV work cut through in, in the way that it does. No, to, to, to be honest, we don't think that TV is dead at the moment, especially in France, because the, the TV is, um, we have... We keep a positive return on investment with TV, and it, it remains the best way to even not socialize sorry, your brand, uh, give them you know uh, the message you, you want to share with them. So maybe there is less commitment of the consumer and engagement uh, on this media, but you you must think about it uh, regarding synergy of the media. So we keep a strong basis on TV all the time with this kind of advertising, and all the time we try to keep the same creative idea and adapt it um, to decode of the social media platform, for example, of how to, outdoor uh, especially. So all the time we think our brand campaign, uh, we keep media synergy. There is TV, there is out of phone, there is digital amplification. Um, and especially we manage the long and the cut down format for TV. Um, we also played it with uh, thinking about concentration. Um, we are challenger in France. We have a consideration challenge, so we need to be concentrate on what we want to do to the consumer. So one single thing at the same time uh, to keep all the focus of effort on consistency and repetition of the message you want to share. Um, but at the end, we try to manage it, the concentration and the synergy with the affinity of the, the media plan. So um, we try to move on more premium communication uh, uh, media plan with uh, more peak time, more premium placement, especially for TV. And think about uh, uh, on the uh, digital perspective, different code. For example, uh, with TikTok, we also talk about heritage, like in the TV ad advertising, but not in the same way. In Snapchat also, we adapt all the codes. When we talk about Instagram, we keep the same idea of the brand modernized heritage of the brand, but we adapt it with creative way to, to explain it to the consumer. And we don't, for example, play on the Colonel Sanders on the outdoor uh, campaign because we observe we can't, with Contar that it doesn't work. Uh, the, the, the Colonel Sanders, which is the key um, brand code we can respect because it's the real creator, the authenticity, the 50s of um, uh, the American DNA for French. Uh, we observe that it works when it's with enjoyment, with music, with a kind of swag, but it don't work for, for the outdoor uh, out of home. So, for example, we, we keep the same creative ID, heritage, we keep the same brand codes, the red, the, the three strips, something like that. But we move into more lifestyle thing to explain the heritage in a modern way with some of our consumer uh, with more uh, trendy, uh, positive things. So maybe with the same ID, you can play and adapt. Uh, you can keep the consistency, but adapt the, you know, the speech and all the story, uh, depending on the media. Uh, if you keep the concentration and at the same time, the, um, the, at the first beginning, the same idea, the same value. Okay, that's, that's an interesting 
kind of process view. So when you're developing your video content, do you start with a TV ad and then adapt for TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. or are they developed at the same time? How does it work at KFC? We work it at the same time. Um, at the beginning, we give the initiative and the challenge for the year to the, the agency. We think both ID at the beginning, which can work on digital, which can work on TVC, uh, and which that we can adapt on other media. Uh, every time we think that it's possible to move on TV for, with it, uh, we let them the flexibility, but some of the key ID, uh, uh, um, I can say that merit uh, allowing us to just move into social media plan, for example. If, for example, you find a cultural uh, a trend with the, the agency and you think that uh, uh, you need to make um, a communication creative stunt with the agency, we keep it only on social, from Twitter, from Instagram, or so. So that depending on the ID, uh, and there is maybe no process for it, you need to manage it. So we know that we need advertising, we need T TVC, but we can adapt it. Um, and mostly, if you have a strong ID and if you respect your brand, and keep the modernity at the same time. If you know that there is a magic creative recipe, you can make it on Instagram, on social media, on outdoor, and on on, the, uh, on TVC. And last example, because we are building at the at this time the third opus of our heritage campaign. So this is the beginning of the story with them. Uh, in this case, we uh, just produce the TVC advertising. We know that it will, I hope, works with Kantar. We will test it. We, we will have the time to optimize the TVC, but at the same time, we challenge the agency to find the right uh, outdoor campaign, but also the social media plan. So it's a long journey, but uh, yeah, you, you need to take focus on each media and find the best way to communicate to the consumer yeah. on each uh, touch point. Indeed. And so, so Jane, perhaps my... Um... My news of the death of the 30 second TV ad was slightly exaggerated. <laughs> but I'd be interested to know your your view on this and you know, the role of TV uh, in 2023 and what's kind of shining through in that category in the Cancer Effectiveness Awards. Yeah, I think I think um, you know it, it depends on who you're trying to reach. You know, a lot of campaigns nowadays, despite all the ability of digital to do you know very tight targeting and all that, a lot of campaigns. Um, are still about maximizing reach. That's a lot what a lot of marketers need to do and, and what they want to do. Um, I think um, you know, as you say, you know historically a lot of the effort has gone into producing TV advertising, but we see more effort going into digital uh, uh, channels now, which is good. But we often talk about digital as if they're one big sort of lump of the same thing, and they're obviously most definitely not your experience of, scrolling through Facebook is very different from scrolling through TikTok or Twitter. You you wouldn't have the same ad, ad on each one. And that's why I think we would always advocate um, for digital channels testing in context um, because you can't really, you know, people people are familiar with a TV ad. You know, you, you watch some content, there's some ads, you know, you know what it's like in your country, you know how that works. Um, the experience online is very different and your ability to control it is very different as well. So I think testing in context is something we would always say is really important. And then, you know, actually, you know, this execution might perform really well on YouTube, but not so well on uh, Facebook, for example. Um, so I think it, it's, a, it's a delicate balance. And I guess maybe it speaks to, you know, the role of the marketer nowadays has has changed because of the multiplicity of agencies that you might need to work with. You know, often there's a separate influencer agency, separate digital, um, you know, maybe somebody special doing TikTok, some of it might be in-house, another agency doing TV, outdoor print, et cetera. Um, the, you know, the marketer's role is, you know, I guess you do need to focus on the detail now. It's, you know, the brief comes from the marketer. You can't just hope that your agencies will coordinate between them. Um, it has to be a sort of painstaking process of um, understanding, briefing, feeding back and coordinating. That's that's my my thesis. Anyway, it'd be interesting to hear, Pierre, whether that's that's right or not. No, no that's OK. And that's that's why I explained that we try to process it, because if you want to brief uh, as a one shot every time, every year, uh, just in reaction uh, to, I don't know, to a consumer insight every time, it's impossible because you, you will not be at the end edge yield. Uh, you also need to manage your effort of production. You need to mm. uh, think about the process to produce big things. So that's why we try to uh, yeah, think about it annually. And after we keep uh, with it, we produce all of our campaign with our mission. We protect the time to make it. 
uh, because if you want to go faster in the um, the production and the, the execution of the idea, it's impossible to create uh, a positive and uh, great things. And it helps us to, to protect some time to, to discuss more uh, agile things, more social campaign, to adapt the plan at the end. So we give 20% of our budget to adapt uh, to the ID and move on a, a TVC if we need to make it at the, during, the, during the year. And uh, we have a question from Louisa. Thank you, Louisa, for the question. Um, she says this is a very interesting business case, very powerful. But Pierre, how long did it take you to develop that campaign from brief through to asset production, pre-testing and then launch? What was the timeline? We, uh, we tried to make the maximum uh, uh, the maximum of campaign at the same time. So in our um, current case, uh, we brief in September of October for the next year. Uh, we give the full challenge to the um, um, to the agency, and we keep around three months or four months to only discuss the global overview of the creative idea, on brand, on core, on promotion. Um, we we dig into each idea. We try to uh, uh, stretch only the creative proposition at the beginning without media plan, without the, without discussion with the media agency. So we keep it as a creative time. Um, when we uh, at the end of the year we uh, we uh, find maybe for us the, the bolder ID and the right potential ID to uh, change the perception of the consumer. We gather the information and we collaborate with the media agency and we begin to build uh, about production. So we uh, keep a, a focus on each campaign and try to think about the production and uh, is it the right execution? Is it the right storyboard to make the thing? Is it simple? Is it relevant? Is it distinctive? Uh, work, work on the codes, but we are protected because at the first beginning, we see the overall overview of all the, the media plan. We talk about all the brand codes we infuse on each copy. We uh, phone, for example, for the next year, we already found the new music. We already found the new code. And we, uh, we ask to the agency to play it and adapt it in each campaign. So we are not crazy at the end, we adapt, but uh, it's the best way to protect the, the, the full media plan and think about it as, yeah, um, uh, a global uh, creative plan, not only a one-shot uh, campaign. And so, in in summary, that would that sounded like a six-month process. Yeah, sorry, and sorry. So this is the the time of the the preparation. After with the production, it's maybe six months. Uh, for example, the new uh, uh, we briefed in October, and the new uh, brand um, communication uh, asset is ready in two weeks. So you know, around six months, seven months, and we keep. Um, we will put, for example, this brand campaign in, on air in November only because we want to think about uh, creative cultural amplification on social media. Uh, think about, I don't know, the uh, football activation or something around the gaming, I don't know. Um, to address, for example, the Gen Z differently with the same, uh, the same ID. And I, and I wonder, Pierre, how you kind of manage with shifting external pr um, pressures. So, for instance, in our recent Lion State of Creativity study, um, we revealed a big shift in, in attitudes. Uh, marketers believing they were having to shift back to short-term tactics, uh, which they saw as being inevitable when the pressures were mounting on immediate return on investment because of the uncertainties in, in markets. Um, do you have any advice for our audience today on how to make those kind of shorter-term pressures and investments yeah. work harder? Uh, we, we leave the same thing because in quick uh, restaurant service, this is a fast category and we manage the business every day uh, versus the, um, the, the the last year. So the, the culture of performance and the culture of business is at the heart of all the discussion in uh, when you uh, play in the fast, uh, the fast food category. So this is not an easy way because, um, for example, we have a, as we said, we have a consideration challenge and in image perception turnaround to operate in France, but at the same time, we have some challenge on the short term sales. So we try to protect it with the media investment. Um, so we try to play it with Sobo principles, sales overnight, brand over time. So we think about uh, the, the money we put on the promotion, which is around 20% in our case, but we protect the maximum of money to the brand and to the, the core icons. And we try every year to accelerate on the brand and on the core and reduce the promotional, for example, investment. And it works, but it works only because the creative we, 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 we put on air 
um, have the capacity at the moment, uh, if we talk about the brand communication, but also our full product communication, they work on sh a short term, but they also have in the counter test the capacity to uh, um, build on the brand power and uh, build the brand equity for the future. So mm. you can manage it with the solo principles and accelerate on your brand, even only, sorry, if you have a creative that play on the, the two sides. Um, that's, for example, there is a layer on which one we struggle, which is the, the promotion campaign. This is maybe the, the only layer uh, where we don't find the magic recipe to play on the short term, but also on the brand equity. Um, they are playing well to create sales and to, uh, um, to um, infuse sales in the business, but, but they don't work on the brand power. So that's why we try to reduce this kind of communication and at the same time find a better recipe because even if it's promotion, we maybe can find a creative recipe to build the equity, but at the same time make sales. Great, thank I you. Know, I don't know, Jane, if you want to build on it, but yeah, yes, yeah. the interesting case we have in our brand. Yeah, uh, and I think it's it's it, you know this this sort of blows with the wind as well. This kind of you know going back and forth between sort of short term brand and brand marketing, and you know there is a way of combining both. I do strongly believe that, and we we know that we can we can prove that. That's why we measure both of those things in link. Um, you know, it does come back to distinctive assets and making sure that they are continue to be used, even, even in um, perhaps more promotional type of advertising. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I guess, you know, marketer's job is to is to sort of not only drive volume, but also to protect the margin. And we know that if you are perceptibly different, um, consumers perceive you to be different and you give them meaning you know some mean uh, unique meaning um, they will continue to choose you and they will continue to um, consider that the price is worth it you know and you don't have to cut your prices so I think that I, I think that there's a lot of narrative at the moment about marketers perhaps being too short term but that's entirely understandable because obviously we've all got our quarterly targets to meet on everything but also we mustn't forget it's about protecting margin as well so you know, your brand building advertising helps to support your margin protection. And that's something that I think marketers often underestimate. Absolutely. And, and a couple of questions actually from, from our from our audience that relate to that. Um, first of all, from uh, Frederick Offerman's at Heineken. Hi, Freddie. Good to see you online today. Um, Freddie's asking, how do you decide when to move on to the next idea, the next big idea? And then related to that, um, Jorge Odorica has asked, what are some of the biggest risks that you must take when building the next big campaign? So two related questions there for you first, Pierre. Yeah, um, we change the, all the asset every year, to be honest. And even if it works and all the, the main part of our asset are green in the, in the test of Kantar, but every year we try to uh, um, push forward with the agency, the creativity. So, you know, at the moment we have, we have a food campaign, we have brand campaign that works. We had the, the recognition, which, which are truly positive, but we, we will read the campaign, but we don't want to, um, the consumer, the consumer, to be bored uh, with a lot, a lot of repetition. So we try to brief every year, change all the possibility, change all the ambition. Even it's better if you have the uh, the solid creative footprint and solid assets to read. But every time, maybe you need to push forward your agency to find new things, find new ideas, new way to um, new way to highlight your heritage of brand. For example, in our case, so. We keep the same marketing principles, but we change the assets. And especially on the brand, we talk for the third time, we will talk about heritage in a modern way. So this is the, the magic recipe uh, we found on the creativity, but there is many, many ways to think about it. Uh, we, can, uh, um, we can make a mashup, you know, with the 50s code and the present day. We can think about the future of the crispiness and give them a positive imaginary of the brand. We can think about many, many things and don't stay in the kitchen with the colonel. So you need to take some risk, but keeping the, the heart of the magic creative recipe you found. So it's not an easy way. And all the time we take the risks to, to go to the counter test. Uh, in, for, to be honest, in two weeks or three weeks, we will put in, in counter test uh, many, many uh, new assets. We don't know if it will work. Uh, we put the money on the production before the results. This is the risk we, the risk we want to take, but 
we know that at the beginning we study all the possible things we need to study to to build it so maybe it will give us some guarantee great and, and jane if you've got anything to add to that very quickly before we move on to the final final piece yeah just very quickly i think there's often a temptation perhaps by marketers to often create something new because it's possible and obviously agencies want to do that as well but we can't underestimate the importance of um you know creative can wear in you know you don't have it, it doesn't wear out as quickly as you think so measuring that is, is important um and also frequency like it's a much um, under underutilized kind of old school media metric but you know quite often people can bear seeing an ad more times because they haven't seen it enough now it depends on digital platforms maybe not because there's quite a lot of saturation on some platforms and over um over use of frequency but you know on other channels maybe not so i think it's just understanding how that campaign is performing um and on risks i think you can always mitigate a risk right you know we would say that you can mitigate your risks by doing your testing by understanding what people think um it doesn't reduce the creativity it empowers it wonderful and what a, what a great note to to finish on we're almost at time um, Freddie actually followed up just to say they also discovered with the help of Kantar that wear out is indeed limited and marketers tend to get tired of executions much quicker than consumers and we see yeah. that all the time and I love Mark, Mark Ritson's mantra you know mm -hmm. the marketer isn't the market and it's always something worth remembering <laughs> yeah. I just want to say a huge huge thank you to you Pierre and you Jane it's been a great conversation we could have gone on much longer I've got so many <laughs> questions maybe we need another one but yeah. thank you both so much i'm going to hand back to fiore just to wrap up okay thank you very much been a really truly insightful session and we really appreciated your engagement and contribution to today's uh private lions marketer session a special thank you to our panelists and a final reminder that we will be back with a live and in-person lion marketer session in Cannes at the festival and so stay tuned for more information on this special event. Last but not least, if you are planning to attend Calliance this year, we have a pass that is just for you, for marketers. And sessions like these ones are included in the pass, inspiration, content, private session. So if you're looking for some inspiration at the festival, the Brand Marketer Pass is for you. And we will send you more information on this very soon. But um, yeah, welcome. Well, thank you for every for, for everybody uh, attending the session today. And uh, have a great afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> and see you very soon in Cannes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.